isn't that just wonderful? Today it's just come become so much about perfectionism and music. That's what it's about. She looked like she was having actual fun on stage. Kia ora and welcome back. My name is Zoe Stevi, your vocal coach for today. In today's video, we're going to do it and take a look at Cass Elliott with Dream A Little Dream of Me from 1970. You may think that this is a little bit strange for me to have a look at such an old recording, but if you do not know Cass Elliott, she is an incredible singer. Incredible. And she is a perfect example of a chest voice quality with a little bit of cry. And this song is excellent if you are looking to work on your chest voice quality. Let's take a look at Cass Elliott. I have seen this performance before. I'm gonna help you analyze what's happening with her vocal technique. Let's get straight to the video. Stars shining bright above you Night breezes seem to whisper I love you Birds singing in the sycamore tree Dream a little dream of me Say Okay, so if you do not know Cass Elliot, I really, really encourage you to listen to more of the Mamas and Papas because this, and, and she, you know, she's got more in the tank. She's got much more in the tank, but that's not what this is about. The stars shine and So this is around middle C, which is really perfect for working on your chest voice quality. Stars shining bright above me. So this is very much a chest voice sound. Now I know what you're thinking. It doesn't sound very loud, it doesn't sound very strong. What she's done is she's taken a lot of the volume out, introducing just a tiny bit of air. And you can hear this volume and a little bit of that vibrato coming in just to color the end of the sounds. You can see they're very relaxed in her upper head and chest region, but that's not a sign that she's not working. That's that showing that she's put in the work earlier. A little bit of that cry going on there, a little tiny bit of the lowering of the larynx, but not too much. Otherwise that would sound a little bit more jazzy. Let's just go back on this because I really want you to notice that she's just kind of going, she's not adding on too much to the sound. Stars shining right above you Night breezes seem to whisper I love you Birds singing in the sycamore tree Dream a little dream Say 99 and kiss me Just hold me tight and tell me you miss me While I'm alone and blue as can be Dream a little dream of me So she's, especially when she's going While I'm alone A little bit more of the tightening going on at the back of the throat There's Wah, the ah is again, it's not only the back of the throat, you can't just tense one muscle in the throat, but it's very much this sort of tightening at this back of the, while I'm alone. Ah. That's an overstatement, right? She just did a tiny amount of that. But what it's about is about learning how to turn it on and then turn it off again. And this is in a, in a relatively easy part of her range. She's not working for this sound. And that's what I love about Dream A Little Dream on me, of me, because it's about finding that ease in the lower part of the range, especially for the first part of the song. But if you're looking to improve your chest voice, then check out my chest voice challenge available in the description below, because it will really help you to find this more relaxed setting on your chest voice. Let's go into this chorus, because she does take it up. A little dream of me. Dreams. 
wasn't that just wonderful? Stars, stars fading. So she's going up to that A4. I always have to think about those numbers. Why is that important? Because when we're working on the chest voice sound, we want to sing songs that stay in that chest voice quality. Because the hardest thing is when we flip out of it to come back in. So when we're just focusing on staying in that one section of the voice. Very much the cry going on there. You notice she did use a little bit more of the head and neck anchoring as she went further up. But what did she do? She took the microphone very far away from her when she sang there. So acoustically that's telling me that the sound is a lot louder. The mouth started opening a little bit wider. Stars fading and she didn't go fading and go too wide fading but I'll linger on to you and she's adjusting the volume the entire time and that's so important when it comes to singing of not just saying hey throw away one one particular volume she's again now in the second verse going to take the volume right down bringing that microphone further for, you know further to her close <gasps> further to further closer what the on earth I can't even speak closer to her mouth Sweet dreams till sunbeams find you Sweet dreams that leave all worries behind you But in your dreams, whatever they be Dream a little dream of me <gasps> Isn't that just, this is just artistry And when she's, you know, you can see See, she means what she's saying on her face, but she's not overdoing it. And this is what I love about this song. It's not about vocal fireworks. It is a lot about the beauty of the tone. Now, I am well aware that this was very much in style at the time. And this was considered the way that was considered beautiful singing as well. It's not the only way, but this was considered beautiful singing to have a little bit more what you could say of that classical influence coming in there. A little bit of a stars fading, but I linger on to you. You know, it's sort of, it's it's very much that cry sound coming in there where we were in the, the verse, not in this chorus just yet. Um, The stars fading and it's not a hell of a lot of air in there, but we have got a really good vocal fold closure. That's why I love giving people the sound because not, uh, the song, because not only is it a really excellent reference, point to hear Cass and the way that she's singing because we don't have pressure in the sound we don't have too much we don't have any pressing whatsoever we've got a relatively relaxed performance going on there and this really great acoustic difference um, between the verse and the chorus which really sim symbolizes when we do sing it ourselves that when we go higher in the range it's going to sound louder automatically when we go lower in the range it's going to sound uh, quieter automatically but if you are wanting to learn more about the chest voice and how to improve the upper part of your range as well then check out the link in the description below because my vocal academy is open and if you want to learn to sing well i'm going to help you with bi-weekly masterclasses as well as an entire library full of on-demand singing lessons for you. And the most important thing about the Vocal Academy is I provide you with trainings plans to go, okay, week one, I want you to work on this. Week two, I want you to work on this so that you can build up your voice step by step. That's what I'm here for. Structured singing practice is in my opinion, the only way to really improve with your singing. Uh, but let's go into this chorus with Cass because like, oh, this is a masterclass all on its own. Starts fading, but I linger on dear. Isn't that just wonderful? Like, rather than just yelling the shit through a bloody song, I feel like a lot of people these days just really just like want to just sing loud, 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 loud. And there's just so little finesse in just simply singing loud. This is finesse. Like, this is just, this makes you just want to lean in and go, oh, tell me more, Cass. It's just so stunning. And obviously, that is very subjective, yeah? Uh, if you want to listen to someone just screaming at you, uh, then be my guest. I'm not going to stand in your way. I listen to a lot of singing all day, every day. So I do like to have a little bit of variation in that. 
when she went higher in the range, did you notice that there was a little bit of twang and stars fading? It was almost like she turned up the dial on her accent. Now I'm aware that Cass Elliot is American. So in the American standard accent, there is like in my accent, actually, I have a little bit of that eh, going on there. Yeah. In my New Zealand accent, um, we, we turn up the dial a little bit on that twang and twang is the way that we do get higher in the range with a thicker vocal fold. And we started to get a little bit more of the depth coming into the sound there. Stars fading. It was almost like the sound rounded out a little bit. And that is due to the fact that the vocal folds are thicker. We've got more vocal fold contact and therefore we're getting as well some of those lower undertones. I wanted to say overtones, but you can't get lower overtones. Some of those undertones coming into the sound. So overtones can actually only occur over the note that we're singing. In order to get those undertones coming in, we need to either drop the larynx or we need to thicken up the vocal folds to get that kind of depth to the sound. Sweet dreams till sunbeams find you. Sweet dreams that leave on worries far behind you. But in your dreams, whatever they be, dream a little dream of me. La da 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 isn't that just so wonderful? And I just honestly, I just got a little bit teary because it's just such a shame, isn't it? That today it's just come become so much about perfectionism and music. And that's what it's about. She looked like she was having actual fun on stage. And that's what I really want to encourage you to have is to enjoy yourself when you're coming to singing. We can practice so much. We can practice until the, you know, until the end of our days, but actually in the end, it's about putting all of that aside when we come to standing on stage and enjoying that moment. And if something happens in live performance, so that's absolutely fine. Oh, that was just absolute, that was just beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. It's really important when you're thinking about the chess voice uh, to, to pick a good song, to pick a song A that you like singing, but also to pick a song that's within your vocal range. And another third one in there is also to pick a song, not only within your vocal range, but that stays within that vocal quality that you're looking to improve. And one of the trickiest parts about a lot of songs from today is because singers are starting, it's not even really about that they're starting much, much younger. It's just there's this, this, this huge thing at the moment of singing like really really low and singing really really high and that is a trained singer's sound so it's hard for you out there to then go oh I'm gonna sing this song because they end up being like way out of your vocal register and it just makes it hard and difficult so maybe you know take a little look back at some older music because there it wasn't all about vocal fireworks it was about good singing and they're just beautiful songs out there you could sing that in any style you wanted oh my goodness me, Cass. Should we have a look at more Cass Elliot here on the channel? Let me know down in the comments if you would like me to. Uh, and if you've enjoyed this video, hit that subscribe button because I'd love to see you around here more often. Honestly, really does help me to help more people like yourself with their vocal technique. And I also have my vocal academy. The doors are open. I'm so excited. It's a place where I help singers with bi-weekly masterclasses as well as small practice groups and a community full of singers who are just so motivated to improve their vocal technique. Uh, we have weekly updates and challenges as well as training plans. So you know exactly what you should be singing, when you should be singing, and you are going to buy come hell or high water, make some improvements to your singing. <laughs> anyway, I'll see you right here next time. Have an awesome rest of your day and happy singing. Kaki channel.